the discriminating gamer. The board game review show that bit off Mike Tyson's ear. <laughs> kidding, I'm kidding. Ladies and gentlemen, a few weeks ago, we took a look at Zorro of the Seas. Now we're going to take a look at the original Zorro from... Games. In Zorro, from games, two to eight players essentially are going to try to navigate along this kind of dragon tile board as they attempt to be the last man standing. Now, this is a path laying game, a tile laying game, and it's very similar to Zorro of the Seas. Now, essentially, in the original Tsoro, what you do is you go ahead and you get a, each get three tiles, you get a marker, and there's the board. Well, you place your little markers on the edge of specific little uh, dividers, little lines along the side of the board, and then on your turn, of course, you place a tile that moves your marker along the board. Now, everybody does this, so everybody's uh, people are moving around the board, but then, of course, when you come into contact with other people, if, if you're on the same thing or you're on a tile that touches, it's going to move other people as well. And so what you're trying to do is maneuver yourself into a position where ideally nobody else is going to lay down a tile in front of you because that may affect you adversely. Uh, but at the same time, you would like to do that to other players. Now, as the board begins to get filled up with these tiles, it's going to become harder and harder to be the master of your own fate. So eventually, you are going to go ahead and probably get uh, a uh, tile placed in front of you. Now, that may not be a bad thing. It may not put you in a bad place, but increasingly, it's going to tr make you trace a line all the way back to the end of the board. And if you trace a line all the way back to the end of the board... You're out of the game. So again, it's a game of last man standing. Now that is essentially it. Like I say, each turn, you're going to go ahead, you're going to play one of these tiles, you move, you get to draw a new tile. And you go around, you go around. If you run out of tiles, there's some funky rules for tiles that get kind of shuffled back into the deck when people die. But essentially, that is how the game is played in a nutshell. Soro is a fun game. It's, it's a very fun game. Um, I enjoy it quite a bit. But I've also played Sorrow of the Seas, which is the sequel game to this. And so I kind of have to compare the two games. Now, Sorrow is essentially this tile game of tracing the lines. It's a quick game. It's a fast game, especially if you're playing with you know, fewer people than, uh, than the maximum. It can go by pretty quick. It's fun. It's interesting. It's nail-biting. It's intense. It drags you in. It's very quick, and it is very, very light. Now, Sorrow of the Seas, there's a bit more to it because you've got the monsters that are going uh, around the board, so it's not just trying to navigate your way so you don't go off the board, but you're also trying to not navigate into the monsters. And then also the expansions, Veterans of the Seas, to Sorrow of the Seas, gives you some other uh, options, some, some kind of fun and interesting new tiles. Uh, there's cannons where you can destroy the monsters. There's more going on in Sorrow of the Seas. So I like Sorrow. I think it's a fun game. But, being a gamer, I really enjoy Zorro of the Seas quite a bit more. I think there's just more game in Zorro of the Seas. So I would say, if you are a gamer and you like a little bit more complexity, you like more options, you like more things going on, then absolutely get Zorro of the Seas. But... If maybe you or the people you're playing with are lighter gamers, maybe they're not interested in, in, in all the funky mechanics and the bells and whistles, I think Sorrow is a fantastic gateway game. It's a, it's a great game that will drag people in, incredibly easy to play, incredibly easy to learn, and it, it, it's, it's just phenomenal fun. They both are. Um, my point here is you want to get at least one of these games. Either it's Sorrow or it's Sorrow of the Sea. And depending on the complexity level you like and you think the people you'll play with would like, that's going to determine which one you should get. If you want an easier game, an easier to teach game, an easier to learn game, easier to play game, get the original Sorrow. If you want a game that is heavier, gives you more options, is a little bit more gamey, get Sorrow of the Seas. They're both fantastic games. And i got to tell you, Games is a fantastic company. Um, they put out a lot of good stuff. So definitely you're going to want to pick up one of these games. I don't know that you need to have both of them. They're similar enough that I don't think you need both of them unless you want to graduate from Zorro to Zorro of the Seas. But definitely you're going to want to pick up one of these games. 
So the recommendation for the discriminating gamer is buy Zorro or Zorro of the Seas. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment here on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please, please, please like us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. We are The Discriminating Gamer. Don't, uh, don't tell Mike Tyson about what I said earlier in the video. He's, um, he scares me. again and I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been please somebody help me on the solid ground it's a long time and I'll be dying once a year I wind up in the band well you tell Cody he's full of crap